been a while. So yeah, so it's gonna be a long intro. Um, kinda need to talk about some stuff, so you just wanna go straight to the hands, you can go ahead and go to this time. And uh, should be up there. If not, sorry. So yeah, no really no excuses. Just kinda didn't wanna vlog. Uh, <clears throat> didn't want to vlog um been uh not on a downswing but just more just didn't have any content uh i'm don't want to just put out a video and just only winning 10 bucks on uh, losing 50 bucks and you know kind of boring sessions not put out good content not put out quality content i should say and so I haven't really been in the mood for vlogging, but yeah, and then what else happened? So I wanted to talk also about me getting banned from, uh, as much as I don't want to use a name, I kind of feel like I have to, to tell the story, I guess. All right, so let me tell you what happened with me first. And, and, uh, and whether they watch it or not, it is what it is. So, man, it's even difficult to talk about because kind of, I thought I buried it, but it kind of brings up a couple feelings and it's kind of uh, still hard to believe. But, all right, so being a poker player in San Antonio, there's a couple of poker rooms here available. And being a poker player in San Antonio, you can go wherever you want. Well, keeping that in mind, I got banned from Royal Card House, one of the ones I've always featured on my blog. And the way I got notified I was banned and everything that transpired kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Used to go play a role a lot, as y'all can tell in my vlogs. Um, feature them a lot. And then once uh, another card house opened up two or three miles down the road, uh, which is Wicked River, which I go play now, it's right by my house. Of course, I'm gonna support them as well. I want a different poker room, you know, here and there. It's it is what it is. You don't go. You go to the same restaurant here and there. But every once in a while, you like to go to a different one just to see how it is. And uh, it's actually pretty well. It's actually pretty nice. I want them to succeed. And in doing so, I went ahead and advertised for them. And uh, what little viewers I do have and, you know, whoever you buy vlogs, you know, in San Antonio or anywhere in Texas can see, hey, this is a pop room that's trying to make it. They're, this is a pop, new pop room that opened up and it's just a different uh, atmosphere. So, I advertised their, advertise their, uh, their business on my blog, and the next day, the manager from Wicked messaged me and informed me I was banned from Royal. Apparently they took her, uh, apparently she went over there to play, which she's done before, and she's given them business. She she works out she works at Wicked, but she's given the world business. So it's not like she's going over there to recruit. She keeps quiet. She doesn't talk to anybody about trying to go play at Wicked, trying to go, you know, hey, come play at my business kind of thing like that. But she went over there to go play as normal. And uh, they pulled her aside. They pulled her outside, and they basically told her that she was banned. While they were telling her why she was banned. They asked if she knew Lewis, and of course she said yes, of course. And she's like, well, let him know that he's no longer welcome here. I meet up with her later, and she explains to me what happened. And she explained to me what happened. Now, whether it was the owner or whether it was somebody who, an employee who did it, I'm not sure. Normally I wouldn't mind, normally I would be like, okay, well, let me hear from the source. Let me hear from the, from the, no, let me hear from them themselves. But within an hour later, I start getting a message from the employees who I do know from Royal, asking me what I did to get banned. And 
I told them, it's like, I don't even know I was banned. I don't even know. And they're like, yeah. They're like, yeah, well, when you advertise Wicked, it kind of got a little awkward that time because they ended up watching it at the table or they watched it in the office and it kind of got a little awkward for it. So, I didn't even know. But having in, their employees message me and ask me why I got banned and ask, and telling me it got awkward was something that kind of sealed the deal for me. Uh, now the owner, now the owner has tried to call me and text me. I didn't want to talk to him. I didn't want to uh, speak to him or anything like that. And I was kind of upset. I was kind of like, you know, how can this be? You know, he did message and say, you know, <clears throat> he did message and say, I thought we were friends. I'm like, exactly. I go, so why am I getting messages from everybody and their mama telling me why, you know, asking me why I got bad, you know, for the employees to get wind of it must be true. So I just didn't want to talk to him and I didn't want to, I didn't want to speak to him. Now, whether he watches this or not, it, you know, it is what it is. You made your choice and kind of pissed me off and kind of made me sad at the same time because for a simple fact that I can go play wherever the hell I want. If I go and play at Rounders, if I go and play at Alamo Card House, if I go play at SA Card House or wherever it case be, I go play wherever the hell I want. Now, a new poke room opened up near near, uh, near them which I get you know kind of like oh no business there but you know but you know it's one of those things it's like y'all should be helping each other and I say this because since y'all near each other Y'all could be helping each other by recruiting new people, telling them about the other book room, having them go there, and have them go back. You know, the new poker players that come, the new poker players that are coming out to come play from the house games and everything like that, and they come to each one. Then another book room opened up, and y'all don't have to keep going to Rounders or uh SA Poker Palace or wherever wherever they want to go consistently that they want to change it up they want a different player pool they want softer table they want a harder table whatever case it be they can come and check this place out too and see what they think I can't really say much to too much more it's just more of those of that thing where I can't believe I got banned for something that I did with them but I'm not exclusively to them I'm not getting paid by them I'm not hired by them to to vlog to record at their place so why does it matter if I vlog and record and promote a different different place I'm a poker player I go and play wherever I want a poker house to end up being doing well I will support them as much as I can i.e. Royal you know, now I'm doing it for Wicked. You know, I could have done for both of them. Why? Because they're both right there by my house. I'm not gonna, you know, I want them to succeed so that way I don't have to drive 30 minutes to a card house to go play. I don't want to do that. But, you know, I'm not here to talk about the product. I'm not here to bash the product. You know, they run it the way they do. And, you know, y'all saw my vlogs and I can't really say much. So, I'm not here to bash your product. I'm just here to explain why or why I think I got banned and why and what happened on my side of the story. So, yeah. But that being said, it's starting to get hot. I've uh, been here for a while. What time is it? Almost time for a uh, pop room to open up in most of few of them open 24 hours but the one i wanted to take y'all is that uh opens up at 10. So yeah so i'm gonna take y'all to the farthest one from here which is essay card house
right, so the first hand of note is going to be a little fun one. It's only three hands into the session. There's a button straddle, and I'm in the big blind with queen jack off. There's a few limps in front of me. I go ahead and decide to limp. I think that you can argue about having making a loose three bet here and try and uh, take away the pot. But the way the button has been playing, uh, he's been playing real aggressive. I feel like he's kind of have he's kind of th tried to three bet me off the hand. And the actions on the straddler, which he ends up putting in a raise to fifty. Now it's a big raise. Uh, Obviously can easily make a fold, but I want to stick with the plan and trying to see a flop with this hand a little loose But still I make the call and we are heads up to a flop of 9 10 4 rainbow I'll go ahead and check and flow and He goes ahead and checks it back surprisingly being heads up to a turn Which is an offsuit 8 having turned the nuts here. We go ahead and lead out for 25 and he surprisingly ends up shoving all in. We snap call before he ends up getting his chips in the pot and flip over a hand right away, let him know that we end up turning it. And we're off to see a river, which is an ace of spades. Doesn't change anything. When did you start liking the turn? When he went all in. He ends up flipping over his hand, which is seven six for a bottom straight. Pretty bad cooler for him, but it's nice to have a little straight double up off the first hand that we end up playing. All right, it's a few orbits later, and I'm in the small blind with queen three of spades. There's three limbs in front of me. I'll go ahead and decide the limp, and the big blind checks. So we are four ways to a flop, which is jack, queen, nine with two spades. I check. A player in early position leads out for 12. Middle position ends up three betting to 40. Folds to me, I go ahead and making the call. I haven't flopped the top pair with a backdoor with obviously a flush draw. And early position makes a call. So we're three ways to a turn, which is a 10 of hearts. Ends up checking to the middle position, who ends up moving all in. He's the guy in the previous hand on the button straddle. And uh, something tells me he's not playing around this time. Or he's trying to bluff. Getting about two and a half to one. I uh, believe we need uh, something like 28-29% equity for this call, which I don't think we end up having. We could be behind a, a few bad hands uh, and, um, or even a better flush draw. So I'll go ahead and make the fold. Actions on early position, who ends up tanking for a while, and makes a call. They're a heads up off to see a river, which is the three of hearts. Middle position ends up showing ace king offsuit for turn straight. End up being happy with the fold after all. Alright, so the next hand of notes. We are in the hijack with king jack off. There's two lips in front of me. I go ahead and make it 15. Uh, I think I should have made it a little bit bigger. Um, I'm counting for the two limpers, but as played, I go ahead and make it 15. The button the big blind and the two limpers make the call so like i said i guess i should have made it a little bit bigger because we're a five ways to a flop of king two three with two spades checks to me i go ahead and see bet to 30 and only the button makes a call so we end up being heads up to a turn which is an offsuit 10. continue my aggression i go ahead and bet 45. i in my head i was thinking i was making 50 but I end up laying out 45 and the button makes a call again. So we're still heads up to a river, which is an offsuit queen. Not really concerned about king queen here, uh, thinking that he would have either three bet pre flop or he would have at least raised on the flop or the turn, considering there was a flush draw and some backdoor straight draws that would have been there. So with that in mind, I end up shoving all in for 95. And he tanked for a while, but ends up making the fold. Oh my god, I'm not doing it right. Two hands in a row. Five below. Alright, so the next hand of note we are gonna go over. There's a seven dollar button shuttle. There's one limp in front of me. I'm in the cutoff with ace queen offsuit. I'll go ahead and raise it to twenty. And only the limper and the straddler call. So we are three ways to a flop of Jack 10 10 with two hearts. The limper checks, I'll go ahead and decide to check this one to see what the button wants to do. And he ends up betting $30. Folds to me, I end up uh, making the call thinking he could obviously be bluffing this, trying to steal the pot. So uh, with two over to the board, I'll go ahead and make the call. 
heads up to a turn of uh, eight of hearts. Heads up. I end up checking to the button, who ends up betting 30. I end up checking my card to see if I end up having a heart, which I do. And uh, I'll go ahead and make the call, trying to float and hopefully river get, end up getting lucky on the river, which I end up doing, hitting the ace of hearts on the river. I go ahead and check and he ends up checking. I told him I end up having a heart and he's like, of course you do. Have a heart. He ends up flipping over nine, seven, four, a turn straight. So I was right in calling on the flop, but I didn't realize where that bet on the turn. So nice to get lucky here and there. All right, so the next time we're gonna go over, there's a button shuttle of eight. It's the same guy that you shadowed last time. There's two lids in front of me. I'm in the cutoff with ace five of diamonds. I'll go ahead and lift to see what the button's gonna do, and he ends up checking his options. So we're four ways to a flop of two, five, six, rainbow. When it checks to me on the flop, I'll go ahead and make a better 15, trying to steal this pot with a pair of fives, thinking I'm good here. And both the button and early position makes the call. So we are three ways to a turn, which is offsuit four. I end up checking to the button this time, who ends up betting 25. I end up making the call. And we are heads up to river, which is an offsuit queen. Check. I end up checking, and the button does something weird and bets 100. Looking at this big size, um, making he's making it look real bluffy. I kind of tanked for a while. Uh, a lot of things going on in mind. He could have had a missed straight draw. I'm trying to think what he could do with this for value of Ben this high. Kind of shrugged, thinking that he is bluffing. And I end up making a call. He ends up turning over a jack three offsuit for a turn straight. Yeah, my read was so off on this guy. Alright, so the next time we're gonna go over, I find myself in the small blind with pocket sevens. There's a budge straddle for five, there's three limpers in front of me. I'll go ahead and decide to limp with my pocket sevens, thinking the button's gonna be raising most of the time, trying to thin out the field. And which he ends up doing, putting in a $25 raise. With my pocket sevens, I'm not gonna go anywhere. I'll go ahead and make the call. And the big blind calls. The three limpers called. And we are six ways to a flop of four, five, six, rainbow. Ends up checking to the button who ends up in 75. <coughs> it's on me now. And depending on what to do, whether to just call or anything. Not really thinking he has a straight because I have blockers to the nut straight and thinking that may, uh, he's just doing this with some sort of um, bluff, ace, king, king, queen, stuff like that. So I end up putting in the raise. I end up shoving for 200 and everyone folds. So kind of aggressive play, kind of overplay, but I really didn't want to see a face card or an over card to the board that could, you know, beat my seven. So I'll just happy just to take down the pot. Okay, so the last time we're gonna go over, I'm in early position and I look down at pocket kings. I'll go ahead and race to 15, and there are three callers. We're a four ways to a flop of queen seven three rainbow. Checks to me, I'll go ahead and bet 30, and I end up getting two callers surprisingly. So, three race to a turn, which brings an offsuit four. Completing the Badookie. I end up betting 50 and everyone folds. So finally get a premium and everybody folds. I guess that's how Perker goes. Not being a bully, man. I'm just playing my hand. Not a bully? No, man. Yeah, I know. I was like, thank God. And then y'all call and I was like, shit, no ace on the turn. <laughs> Always happen. I mean, when you got people that way. Not a bad session. Kind of take y'all someplace different other than that, show you around San Antonio. This is the farthest one from me. This is like a 30 minute drive in San Antonio. So 
yeah it's uh rare that I come out here but uh tell there's good action here what can I say about the room the room is big I love the room uh, kind of like the colors um don't like the tables they're kind of small especially with uh sorry to say but there's a couple of bigger people than me sitting there and kind of was a little cramped so it is what it is and uh they have a thing with um, the cup holders being raised like it's not flat it's kind of beveled or whatever you want to call it so it was kind of a um, uh, kind of hard kind of filming especially the the actual the rails were tilted this way so I couldn't put my phone there so I actually had to put it on the felt but uh, what else oh and the chips the chips I like I like the chips they're a hard plastic kind of thing like that and I like the size they just stuck together it's like I don't know if it was humid in the in the actual poker room or what but it was a uh, it was humid I mean it was um they were sticky so they were hard to shuffle but yeah, so in the game for 200, out the game for 700 even. So profit of 500, can't complain about that. Uh, played well, there's some hands I should have folded. I probably could have been up, you know, a little bit more, but it is what it is. Uh, still learning, still trying to grind. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So um, that's it from SA Cardhouse. Uh, if you like the videos, leave a like. Drop a comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Check out later.